Okay, hi guys, I'm just going to do a demo here of um, recording uh, some retopology using 3D Coat to retopologize this character I'm working on. Um, what this is, just to look at what I'm looking at, is uh, and how I started this. I got sort of halfway before I start, decided to make the video. Uh, this is actually a ZBrush sculpt, and I've been sculpting. Uh, since last night on um, Dynamesh. So this is actually a Dynamesh mesh. Um, around about some million, million, a bit over a million tries. Um, so I've I've got it to where I want in Dynamesh and I was about to go to normal mesh in uh, ZBrush but I've exported that as a big OBJ and I've brought it in. So all I've done is come to File, uh, Import Reference Mesh and I bring in my massive OBJ. Now don't attempt to open that OBJ in anything like Maya or Max or anything, it'll just probably crash. Um, but 3D code handles are fine, so I've got full frame rate here and I'm not on a supercomputer. Um, so I've done a bit already, so I've done the body and stuff like that. And um, the uh, I've just started on the eyes and while, before I did the face I thought I'd uh, just show some of the tools. I won't show the whole lot and make a real boring video but I'll, I'll show the base tools that you that you need to retopologize. So in 3D Coat, once you're in you'll probably be in the, the paint menu here by default. Um, where if we had UVs we could paint. Um, but I'm just going to go straight to the retopo room. And the retopo room will look pretty much the same um, when you first start. Um, except you'll have this symmetry plane. If you don't see this symmetry plane, come up to symmetry and turn it on. Uh, it's usually X if you model your character facing Z, which is pretty common. So I'll just delete this I and I'll just so I can start from scratch. Um, this pop-up menu you see come up is just been mashing my space bar, all the common tools, which are also over here on the side, however you like to work. Um, after you've done this a few times, you'd probably be best to um, make some custom hotkeys so it will really speed up your work in 3D Coat. So the first thing we do, add split. Um, you'll notice one side of the model will um, not work when you click, but one side will. Um, just for this video I may change the brightness. So with the add split tool you click four times and it makes a polygon. I'm just going to turn the brightness down on my model, this uh, light up here darkens, it makes it a bit easier to see my work. Um, so I can go delete polygons and delete them and start again. Add split. I'm going to start at the edge of the eye here. It's, you can start wherever you wherever you feel comfortable on an eye, um, on a face, but uh, I usually like either the nose or the eye to start off with. Um, and I've got a quads. Now in quads mode, it's going to be on two clicks method by standard, where we hover over the edge you'd like to extrude from, we click, and then click again, click again. Wiggle over the edge, click, click. Wiggle over the edge, click, click. Sometimes it'll stick to the wrong edge. So every time I'm doing this, I have my finger over the escape key because the escape just sort of resets it and starts again. So the main thing that people sort of rage at with um, 3D code is it off it's often hard to select the edge because something like this might happen. It'll ray cast through to the back of the eye socket in this case. Um, I can go to the move vert tool, move vertices, just click and drag it up and it will always sort of snap to the mesh, it's pretty cool. Live snaps to the mesh. If we look over here, it's, it's working on the other side as we go, so we can just ignore that side. Um, we don't actually have to be very accurate at all with um, 3D Coke because it's got some cool relaxed tools. Um, some people watching this video might be going, but what are you doing in 3D Coke if you're a ZBrush artist? Um, because currently, um, ZBrush for R2 has just come out at the recording of this video, and um, it still pretty much sucks for e-topology. ZBrush is not very good at it. It does it, it does it well, but it's slow. It's really slow. Everyone sort of agrees on that fact. And people use programs like this, and maybe a program called Topagun, uh, that seem to be the the main ones used at the moment. Um, the uh, really quick tool. So that's just one of the methods we can create. We could then hit something like relax. You see there, it relaxes to the surface. That was just over on the, the left here. Um, I'm going to undo that because it's actually relaxing my body more than I want it to. This is going to be for a game asset, so I want to sort of keep some harsh 
edges and stuff. But anyway, um, the uh, other method, I still use quads. Quads move verts um, and add split um, for most everything. I'll show you one of the other methods in quads that I like to use sometimes. If you click up here, it's still the quads tool, but we flick it over to direct. With direct, you can click and just sort of click and move like this. Nice and quick, see? You might be saying, hey Matt, you're losing your um, definition on the eyebrow there, but I'll come back to that and I'll show you what I'm going to do. Problem with this tool, when it gets long, it sometimes doesn't snap on well. Sometimes you want to come into the Move Vert tool and actually move it. In the Quads tool, you can actually uh, right click as well and it will change the size of where you're heading. Um, it's, a, it's a weird tool, but some people like to use this quicker. I like to use it quite a bit, and then just clean up, clean up the uh, bottom side um, or the outer side uh, after. So I'm I'm wasting a lot of the space here, but with um, this split rings tool, this is one of the things that ZBrush really needs. And when ZBrush gets this feature, I'll probably use ZBrush. Click, click, it snaps to the surface. Pretty cool. So, just like when I'm modelling with, uh, in the old days when I'd model eye sockets like this with NURBS and stuff in Maya, um, I'd model in patches. So I'm going to do the eyes, I'll move on to the mouth, move on to the nose, and then I'll join them all up later. That's sort of how I like to work, but you can choose your own workflow with this. I just wanted to show the base tools that I like to use. Um, so, they, they, they are the, the main tools I actually use, um, and I just continue on. I'll show you the, um, um, I'll just have a look for any other tools I use um, before I go into the export process. Uh, yes, you, you might see a lot about strokes and, um, or topo it's called. Um, it, 3D Code does auto topology. Um, I'm yet to see a pretty good mesh come out of it. It's always too high and it's never got, doesn't seem to get very good topology flow. I'm sure it's possible to do it, but... Um, I find being able to pick exactly where you want it to flow um, much more powerful and you can address common issues that you find with topology just like when you're modelling. Um, so this is sort of the future of modelling. I do a lot less modelling in Maya these days um, although good knowledge of Maya modelling is essential. For example this mouth is terrible. I plan on cutting a mouth bag into that, adding adding a, some sort of mouth hole in there. Um, I plan to cut out the back of this eye uh, in Maya, cut out the nostril hole, save some tries, um, do a lot of clean up to this mesh before I go back into ZBrush. Um, so once you've, once you've picked out all your topology and you're like, oh yeah, this is sweet, um, let's just pretend I've finished it all. What we do, if I turn off symmetry, I've only got one side, see? So what, um, what we need to do with symmetry on is actually click the symmetry button. That copies from one side of the mesh over. So when we've got symmetry off, you'll actually see it's now copied over. Um, so now we can actually come into, always forget where this is, uh, retopo export. And we can export out our model as an OBJ or whatever. Um, so they're the base tools. From this point, the next step in the topology, which I'll probably have to save for another video, uh, we bring this into ZBrush and we use the feature in the subtool menu called Project All. That will actually get this mesh and snap it onto our high-res geometry. Like we'll get this mesh and we'll smooth it up heaps of times and we'll snap it on and then we'll, we won't have to use our horrible um, voxel mesh anymore, like our our million try mesh, we can start using a nice proper game mesh and we've got a real game asset, not just a super high poly sculpt clay model. So that's pretty much it. Um, enjoy, I hope it was useful.